Hi, this is Mark from Sound Matters. Hope you're all doing well. I've just finished an interesting piece over at the website and it's related to the importance of mastering. And I've used one record as a particular example to demonstrate how the mastering can make or break the overall sounds of the finished product of the finished record that you buy. So it's kind of a loudness war related piece of content and the record in question is the Red Hot Chili Peppers Californication. So I'm going to explain through the process of this video now in a little bit of detail why on earth I own four copies of this record and essentially the answer is the the mastering. So there each time a, a record is released there is the opportunity for the mastering to be perhaps revisited and each version that is cut to vinyl uh, or is released on a cd will sound slightly different depending on who's mastered who's mastered that record so without further ado i'll get into the content but that's essentially the topic of today's video so a lot of what i'm about to go into is loudness war related stuff so i'll keep this fairly brief and you can follow the link in the description below to learn a little bit more about the loudness war but essentially the loudness war is a phenomenon that happened particularly through the 90s and the 2000s where it kind of really came to a peak where producers mastering engineers and record labels would apply excessive compression and limiting in order to raise the perceived volume of a track and it was all for commercial reasons to sound louder than the next person so when we apply compression and limiting to a, a track we can essentially raise up the quieter parts of a track and bring down the louder parts of the track and then we can push up the overall perceived volume without going into digital distortion in theory and raise the perceived volume of the track so we squash the dynamic range and now we raise the perceived overall volume of the track but in doing so we also lose a lot of the dynamic range we lose a lot of that light and shade that makes music interesting and although you know a small amount of compression can benefit a, a track when it's applied excessively we really can damage the quality of the production and the overall music and while that might seem loud can seem better at first you know you own the con the volume control and uh, when you turn up a track that has lots of excitement and dynamics versus turning up a track that's been squashed and had all that life kind of sucked out of it uh, it sounds a lot better so uh, at the very peak of the loudness war there were some records that really did take this to the extreme to the point where the public started to hear audible distortion so when we take this compression process to its extremes we can start to get clipping we can start to get audible distortion uh, so we don't just reduce the dynamic range we actually degrade the sound quality overall and one of the worst offenders to this uh, phenomenon during this period was the Red Hot Chili Peppers California Californication. So another example was Metallica's Death Magnetic. So you know, the audio quality on both this record and Metallica's record at that time were so bad that you didn't need to be an audio file to notice that there was something wrong here. So what I thought would be an interesting experiment is to go into the example of Californication in particular and explain a little bit why the mastering masses and why i've ended up owning four copies of this record ridiculously so um and the answer essentially is in trying to find the best sounding master of that record um because it is a record that i'm fond of you know it goes back to my kind of teen years if you like so um it's got some sentimental value to me and i've been hunting for the best sounding version of this record over the years so anyway i'll get into the examples and we'll go from there Okay, so there are four copies of this record that I own, which sounds crazy, but there is kind of good reason. So there's the original CD, which I actually can't lay my hands on at the moment, but um, then there's the the most commercially available, easily available vinyl pressing, which is this one here. Now, the original CD version is the one with the offending mastering on it, and I purchased a vinyl copy of this hoping that perhaps the mastering had been a little bit more sensitive and the first copy I purchased sadly didn't sound any better it was to me it sounds exactly like the, like the CD master just pressed the vinyl so no joy there there was then later 
a 2000 in 2012 there was a remastered version pressed to 180 gram vinyl so that's this copy here and when this first was released i actually missed out i didn't buy a copy didn't get to it quick enough and then eventually it became uh, out of, uh, unavailable and wasn't repressed so i missed out to begin with i have since managed to get myself a copy so in the interim where in 2019 when there was a an anniversary pressing released a picture disc i took my chances on this one as well so i purchased the picture disc edition now i know picture discs uh, have a mixed reputation and a mixed bag in terms of the quality of output some of them can sound fairly decent uh, and a lot of them particularly older picture discs can sound quite noisy uh, and there's you know uh, good reason to potentially uh, avoid picture discs if you're going for audio quality as a primary concern um, but anyway i thought i would give it a go and see whether or not there had been a better quality uh, process applied to the mastering um uh well, we'll get to the audio samples and i'll explain kind of what i think is going on but um those are the three vinyl copies i have and i also have a copy of the original cd as well so anyway i've done some audio recordings of each of the vinyl copies that i have and i'm going to play these back now i'm hoping that um this will be okay for demonstration purposes uh but let's go ahead so let's play first of all here i've got three recordings so here's the original um the original vinyl uh copy here that i had and then there's the 2012 remastered copy that i have on this track here and then there's also the picture disc version that i've sampled as well and i'm going to play each one and then we'll talk about what i can hear or what we think we can hear right so i'm going to press play on track one now what you can kind of hear there is the snare drums in particular we can hear a little bit of a kind of uh, a squashed element to it a fizz on there there's a little bit of aggressiveness to the hi-hat and the cymbals in particular but i think what's particularly audible and very very bad is when the sly guitar solo comes in towards the end there we can hear real audible distortion on that guitar so something is very very wrong with this master so there's audible distortion it's very very compressed to the point where we we have lost all of that nice crisp snap and everything that you would normally hear on a snare drum and the clarity that you would hear on the kind of high end so uh, yeah pretty pretty bad so um let's see now how the remastered version of it compares I'll press play on that Yeah. 
Okay, so immediately you can probably hear that slide guitar. So the distortion that was on that first one has completely disappeared. So immediately it is better. Uh, you'll also hear that there's less fizz on the hi-hat and there is a little bit more clarity in the snare drum. However, um, it's still quite compressed. It's still, you know, it's not of the quality that you might hear on records from the earlier 90s uh, and i'll get to an example further down below another example from 1991 from again another red hot chili peppers album so you know uh, blood sugar sets magic is what the album is and i'll show how from the, over the space of from 1991 uh, blood sugar sets magic to californication 1999 there's you know a complete change in the approach of mastering which has been for the detriment of the sound of the music so um yeah it's a little bit better but i would say you know listening to that it it's it is an improvement it's much easier to listen to much less fatiguing on on the ear easier more pleasant to listen to less distortion more clarity better separation of the instruments as a result of all of that um but i would say there's a, a, an awful lot of compression that's at the individual track level that uh you know it doesn't matter what the mastering engineer has done when cutting the record uh they're still going to be you can't erase what has been done in the initial recording process you can't change that by the time it gets to the mastering uh, process so um yeah there's some stuff there that i believe mastering is not going to fix uh, just the over zealous compression perhaps you know i wasn't the person who produced this record but to me it sounds like the mastering has improved on this and it makes it much more pleasant record to listen to but there's still an awful lot of compression on there um let's get to that final example then though the uh picture disc so this will be an interesting one. So released in 2019, this is a different beast altogether. Okay, so one thing you might notice straight away with that, if uh, for the keen eared among us, is that there's an increased level of surface noise. There's this kind of whooshing you can hear, particularly at the beginning in the quieter sections, this underlying noise level that's slightly higher on this record. And that will be because it's a picture disc. So, you know, that's something we noticed uh, quite regularly in uh, in picture discs. So um, there are worse examples than this, but uh, yeah, it that that you're never going to get quite the same audio quality as you would get on a regular piece of black vinyl. So there's that straight away. Um, the other thing I notice is that the distortion on the guitar solo is back again. Um, it is slightly quieter. It's a slightly quieter pressing uh, than than the original one. Uh, however, I, I still believe generally overall this is most likely the same uh, the same master as the original only pressed to a picture disc so a bit of a shame there really um it's debatable there might be some slight improvements without knowing exactly whether or not it was the same master it's hard to tell but i would say that um it sounds about as bad as the uh, as, as the original pressing particularly when we take into account the slide guitar so i mean that is pretty unacceptable the distortion that's on the guitar solo there so yeah um sadly not an improvement so the best copy overall if you're going to own one is the 2012 copy that was done at bernie gridman's um, mastering house 
So um, look for the initials CB uh, that's in the dead wax on, on that record to tell that it is the, the genuine 180 gram one that's been recut by Bernie's um, Mastering House. Uh, but that is the best sounding version and I believe about as good as that record is going to sound so you know uh, Bernie uh, as a mastering engineer has a, a f phenomenal reputation so if anybody was going to do a good job of that it would be it would be his 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 mastering house so uh, that's the copy to own uh saying that if you if you are into streaming if you if you have a streaming uh subscription i have noticed that on tidal they they do actually have a version of it from 2014 which was a remaster and obviously tidal being a more of an audio file streaming service uh, there is a remastered version of it on on tidal from 2014 uh, that doesn't have that same audible distortion uh, on the guitar solo pieces from from what i can hear when i when i play it so uh, you know there may be other versions out there if you if you're not a vinyl collector and you want to hear something a little bit better um again this is more about the the different vinyl copies and physical copies that i own but uh, yes uh, it, at least there's been some admission uh, admission by some that uh, the original release of this was unacceptable and there's been an attempt to to correct it over the years sadly though in most record stores the the one that's most uh, available is not the 2012 repressing it is still that same copy this copy here that i have um you know you go online and you order uh, it's easy to end up with this if it's not on 180 gram vinyl and it doesn't have the initial cb etched into the dead wax then it's not that recut version so watch out for that if you're looking for this record if you're watching this and um, if you're watching this more as just somebody who's interested in mastering then uh, let's take a look at uh, an, an example from the early 90s let's take a look at an example from the same band red hot chili peppers but from their blood sugar sex magic album and this is a very different story altogether so in my view this is actually a great sounding record so i've taken a track here uh for the opening track just to demonstrate how much more punch there is how much how much how much more dynamics how crisp everything sounds let's have a listen shall we Okay, I think you get the point. So what you should be able to hear immediately, it's so noticeable on the snare drum. The, the crack and the snap of that snare drum is night and day compared to the squashed versions on Californication, even on the 2012 repress. Uh, this is a significant change, you know, when we bear in mind that it's just over the course of one decade, a record mastered in 1991 versus a record mastered in 1990, recorded and mastered in 1999. So thanks very much for watching. That's all we've really got time for today. Uh, hopefully that is a good demonstration for you in terms of the importance of mastering and how much of a difference it can make to the final final product there um, you know during the period of the 90s in particular there from the beginning to the end we see quite a stark contrast in terms of the dynamic range that we're left with things have got a little bit better you know since uh, the introduction of things like audio normalization the level normalization in things like streaming services has given record labels less incentive to go down this road of uh, continually you know squashing music because anything that's had the dynamic squashed out of it if the levels are normalized between tracks by a 
streaming service, then actually the one that's had all the life sucked out of it is just going to be at the same level as everything else, but it's just going to sound like it's got less life. So the um, the incentive for for people to, to, to go down this road has really reduced somewhat since then. But, uh, you know, and I think an important demonstration, hopefully through through this uh, video that just shows you how important the mastering process is in getting the, the record, the, the final product to be as it should be. So if you enjoyed this content, consider subscribing and we will see you in the next video. Thank you.